I'm Amir. I run Bernardo Castrop's weekly Q&A membership program with realityinmind.com. And this is an excerpt from one of those sessions in which we were joined by Michael Levin as guest, filmed on the 26th of September 2025. If you enjoy this, you might like to join a Q&A that we're hosting with Michael Levin and Bernardo Castrop next week, the 18th of November. You can find us at withrealityinmind.com or join it as a one-off event via the link in the comments and description below. Good to see you, sir. Hey, Bernardo. Yeah, very good to see you. Yeah, um, let me just adjust one thing. Yeah, I'm really uh, it is, sorry to uh, delay this. Un unexpected uh, technical issues. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's see. I'm gonna I think it makes everyone feel better when... Uh, computer engineers have technical problems that the rest of us can <laughs> the rest of us can feel like okay it happens to the best of us yeah you know you know this story i mean this just uh, it's it's probably because i'm sure we'll uh, we'll talk about it but but this story about uh, you know computers and algorithms and uh, you know kind of doing the same thing each time what you expect them to do it's not all it's cracked up to be so <laughs> that 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 much is clear uh well we do our best to make it very deterministic, but it doesn't we try. Like but that. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing, Bernardo? Good. Good. Um, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Very busy. That's why you, yeah. you, you heard uh, hesitation, but uh, I'm, I'm okay. Good. Still alive yeah. and kicking and still that's doing it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Me meeting, that's what I say too, is I I'm meeting the minimal uh, criteria for a, for a living system. And <laughs> that's really all we can, we can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I have very little um, room for play. So uh, like I, today I had to bring my cat for surgery. And, and then you realize that uh, your life is packed so full that bringing your cat for surgery and taking your cat back almost makes your day impossible. Yeah. <laughs> and then you yeah. see that, oh, okay, that, <laughs> that stuff, I am operating on the limit here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I hope everything's okay. I was just, uh, okay. I was just listening. I was listening to your talk with uh, Jeff Mishlove. Yeah, the really latest. Good. Uh, well, I don't know if it's the latest, maybe, maybe, maybe but the, the, it's the one that, yeah, it's, I think it's a recent one. Yeah. 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 I, I'm almost not giving interviews anymore. I make a few exceptions. Jeff, of course, is, yeah. is one of them. So we recorded an interview a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it's already, it might already be published. Yeah. It's about the diamond. No, no, no. With him, it was not about the diamond. Mm -mm. Uh, no, for, it was. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> All did, right. Did it go over your book, Bernardo? Was the interview on, on your book? I think it was mostly about the previous book, Analytic Idealism in a Nutshell. Oh. But we, we basically talked about everything under the sun. Uh, there wasn't really a coherent theme. <laughs> we just covered everything. Michael and I emailed a little bit before um, this meeting to discuss uh, what to do in it. And we thought one thing that would be nice is just for you to both update each other on uh, it's been a so we've had a couple of meetings where we had those auctioned um, quest Q and A's which raised quite a lot of money for charity. That was that was brilliant. I can't remember if we did two or three, but they they were brilliant. But they didn't really give you a chance to dialogue. So we haven't done that in over a year. I think it was uh, December, not last year, but the year before even. Um, so there's some follow-ons from the themes that you raised in that dialogue. Uh, there's also several questions that members of With Reality in Mind have uh, submitted. But I wonder if you'd prefer to start just by sharing any latest developments uh, between the two of you, and then we can dive into the, the questions that had been raised last time and this time, or the other way around, as you prefer. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Bernardo, do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? Or... Yeah, I think the question was mainly for you. Oh, it's for me. I see. It's both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I, yeah, a number, a number of interesting things. Um, so on the, uh, uh, let's see, I guess I'll start on the, uh, on the, on the biobot side. So, um, we've had, uh, we've had some, some new work on the, uh, on the anthrobots. And so the next kind of, uh, uh, the next paper has come out, which is kind of studying their, their, um, their ecology and physiology and things like this. And we found that 
among other interesting things. You know, so so these are these autonomous uh, little proto organisms that are formed from human adult human tracheal epithelia, right? They sort of assemble themselves, and then they, you know, we we sort of are continuing to study them, and we we found a number of interesting things. The first the first thing we found is that they have, if you look at what genes they express, they they do differential expression of nine thousand genes compared to what they were doing in the body. It's half the gene, it's about half the genome. Nine thousand new gene expressions. So, you know, lots of interesting stuff. Um, and, and another thing we found there is there, if you, if you, if you uh, check their age, you know, because they now have these methylation clocks where you can take cells or tissues and ask um, how old they really are, which is different from the clock time, right? It's like how physiologically how old are they are. The anthrobots are younger than the cells they come from, which means that they've reversed age somewhat, about 20% reversal, um, which is pretty cool. And we're now really working on this issue of like, what was it about their experience that caused them to revise their estimate of their own age, which I think is what's happening here is that their priors about how old they are, are getting sort of softened by their experience. And, you know, we, I, I, I call this age evidencing that basically, yeah, they got some evidence that they're old from their telomeres or whatever, but everything about their environment screams, you're an embryo, you know, there's no other cells around you being bent into a pretzel and there's some like, you know, they're express, expressing some, embryonic genes and things like this and so uh yeah i think i think they're getting some some conflicting evidence and so they're rolling their they're rolling their age back so um so we're working on some of uh, on some of that uh yeah it's pretty pretty wild and uh what else uh similarly with with xenobots so so we did the same thing with xenobots not quite as many about 600 or so new uh new gene expression uh profile you know a novel gene expression profile but one of the things that we found they express is a bunch of genes related to hearing, sound perception. And we thought that's weird. And again, this is differential. So this is not embryo. When they're in their original um, environment, they don't do this. So this is novel. And so we said, hey, it's a sound perception. That's weird. Is it possible that these things could hear? So we stuck a speaker under the dish. And sure enough, uh, if you play if you play sounds to them, they change their behaviors. You can you can you know you can sort of send them signals through sound, which is just wild. And so, and so we're now uh, yeah we're now trying to uh, for ourselves communicate with them, but also having different types of well, let's say two dishes of xenobots or, or xenobots and a plant or xenobots and some other crazy thing communicate to each other through this audio interface. So that we can build, right? So using the using the hard the hardware is basically like a, like a, hor a corpus callosum that takes two different things and allows it to be a one unified you know being, right? That changes that the exchanges information and and so we're trying to make some of these composite composite kind of systems and uh, and trying to trying to see what what happens when you make like radically composite beings with radically different uh, components, right? That kind of stuff, yeah. So so yeah, so so there's some of that. Um, this is so cool. <laughs> you hacking life. It's so cool. It's just amazing. And, and it's like so much of it is reverse engineering, you know, because, because people often say, oh, you bioengineered them. Like we didn't do all that much. It's really, they're doing all the hard work. We, our job is to like have the imagination and the assays to notice it and to see what are they really doing. That's the, that's the trick. They're, they're, they're teaching us all this stuff. Um, and then I guess one other one other thing that uh, that I, I I just wanted to mention is uh, back so so a couple a couple of years ago we had these papers showing that simple uh, molecular pathways like gene regulatory networks or even just chemical pathways that um, this, when when models that describe them as ordinary differential equations those models have learning capacity. So they, they can learn, they, right? And, and we are, you know, we've been making devices to try to train molecular pathways and so on. But more recently, what we found is we found two things that uh, go together. One is that if you train them, the causal emergence of, of, of the system goes up. So phi D goes up, but also as the phi D goes up, they become better learners. And the, and the, cool, the coolest part is if you force them to forget, which is also really important because because for medical reasons there's a lot of memories you would like to wipe from your from your pathways and so we're like learning how to make um, 
how to make things forget. Uh, if you force them to forget, they don't lose whatever gains they had in a 5D. It's, a, it's an asymmetric ratchet. So I feel like this is really interesting for evolution, right? Because long before selection even kicks in, just from the, it's a free gift from the math, like just from the, from the simple chemistry of it, you already have this loop that points upwards. It's an, it's an asymmetric kind of ratchet that points upwards. So the evolution of the richness of consciousness has its own dynamic, its own um, accelerated pathway, let's put it that way. Yeah, up. yeah, right, like right at the bottom before before you have reproduction or, you know, differential selection or any of that stuff, already just as a free gift from the mathematics of causal information theory and networks, you get this thing that points upwards towards more agency, more learning, right? Like, amazing. So, yeah, Fantastic. so I think... Yeah, so that's that's those are just a couple of uh, like a few things we've been we've been digging into. Are you collaborating with uh, Julio on the, how you calculate phi and how you sample the system and all that? Uh... Yeah, we have um. So Eric Hole, who who did a bunch of that work, oh, yeah. so so he's in my center. So I, I hired him uh, a little while ago, and so so he's doing he's doing a bunch of that stuff. Um, with us and I have others. So, so the work that I described is actually uh, Federico Pagosi, who's a postdoc in the lab. He know he knows how to do that stuff too. So that's been that's been some of his work. You know. So you're doing IIT four, I suppose, right? Well, this is this is um, uh, a, a much simplified metric because because you you know proper a proper phi you can't really calculate for more than nine things, right? It's like too crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this is this is phi d. So 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 phi d you can you can calculate. So yeah, fantastic. Um, on my side, yeah, there is one new thing very big in my life since we last talked that AI I decided to jump into that uh, pool because you no, know, it was my original background years ago uh, and now all this hype about AI and you know how I feel about all this talk about artificial consciousness and how much I think it's just nonsense but um, I, I felt um, I can't stand on the side and shout my opinions because why would anyone listen to me, right? We are in a field that, yes, I have a PhD on it, but in 2001, and it's like it's before some of the key researchers today were even born. So why? <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? A PhD from 2001 doesn't matter in today's AI. So I thought, no, I have to jump in. I still run the foundation. It's still my main job in terms of hours, but... Um, Euclid, the AI company that we founded, uh, it's uh, it's becoming a big thing, and it uh, it's like a vacuum cleaner of time and energy. And every time, bit of time and jewel of energy I have left after Essential, it gets sucked right into that, and it's very exciting. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm having a ball. I'm having uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I feel younger at the same time. You know, when I founded a company last time, I was 27 still. I was about to complete 28. And then the company was sold to Intel before I turned 40. Um, and now I started a company, I was 49, about to turn 50. It's been over a year. So now I'm 50 and I feel the difference. You know, it's one thing to do something like this when you're 28. You hardly need to sleep when you're 28, right? Now I I I feel, uh, you know, the body is like, whoa, it it wasn't like this before, you know, and especially now that I have two jobs. Well, before I also had two jobs, but um, it it's been a lot of fun. We are learning a lot, um, and we are making um a contribution. Um, we'll see how that will out but uh, yeah that's the grand summary <laughs> michael since last time there has been ai <laughs> two letters that's yeah. the big thing in yeah. my life now <clears throat> cool yeah yeah it is it is different uh, in their 50s it's definitely different yeah right. yeah and i can't, the plan was that i engineer this oh sorry Bernardo, go. the plan was that i wouldn't be ceo and then we followed the plan for the first couple of months, and, and now here we are. <laughs> but okay, I have to accept my destiny. It's a daimonic call, so <laughs> it's not going to be yeah. like this for very long. But for now, it is what it is. 